Wonderful. So okay. good that you can join us somehow. <laughs> okay, yes, thank you. I'm very happy. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to give this talk and also, uh, especially under the circumstances that uh, my flight was canceled yesterday um, and that we can have the internet to help us here. All right, so uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be talking about women in mathematics in Brazil, okay? And I'm going to try to paint a picture uh, of uh, what's happening uh, with the, the gender issue in mathematics in Brazil. So first of all, the context that I'm going to be discussing is uh, uh, research mathematicians in academia and focusing on women. Okay, um, I have to start by telling you what does what's the career like in Brazil because it's not the same as uh, say in the United States. Okay, and what special issues do women face? Uh, and I guess this is something uh, all over the world. Okay, so let's talk about issues. Uh, you have outright discrimination, of course, we all know what that is, but sometimes it's not outright, it's uh, uh, more subtle, okay? Uh, for instance, uh, I am married to uh, a mathematician, and uh, when uh, we were in the beginning of our careers, uh, we, had, we took a sabbatical leave uh, after a few years, we took a sabbatical leave uh, in the United States, and when we returned, the day that we returned from our sabbatical leave, a colleague uh, comes up to us and says, oh, hi, how are you? How was everything? So glad that you guys are back. And he turns to my husband and he asks, so how was your stay? Was it really productive? Do you have a lot of papers in your luggage and all of results, theorems? Uh, great. And then he looks at me and he says, how, how was it? Did you enjoy living abroad? That's a, a not so subtle uh, discrimination. Uh, diminished self-expectations uh, is uh, another issue that women are faced with. We have nothing to rise up to. Nothing is expected of us. Uh, usually people will uh, hire us and they expect us to uh, you know, raise a family and take care of the house and you know, teach our courses and that's about it. Okay, so we don't get picked for any committees. We rarely get invited to give talks. Um, People don't ask us, oh, how is your grant proposal coming along? And that's, that is something that has a very important role on the development of the career as well, okay? Uh, another issue that I've identified over the years is the uh, issue of competition. The uh, uh, mathematics is very, tends to be very competitive and this competition is encouraged uh, at a very early age through math olympiads. Uh, which have a very important role in, in the development of Brazilian mathematics, uh, the Math Olympiads are uh, the main objective of the, the Brazilian Math Olympiad, I will discuss that in a minute further, uh, is to, uh, to, to select, to find, to seek out uh, and recruit uh, talents in mathematics. Okay? Um, <clears throat> the uh, student competitiveness is very encouraged and I don't know why, but this seems to be at odds with, uh, with women. Okay. Uh, competitive in the workplace is also encouraged and you compete for lots of different things, uh, for uh, advancement, for grants, for, um, I don't know, being chosen for committees, et cetera. Of course, we know about the issues of maternity and, and what a juggling act that is. And um, I'll be discussing later some recent solutions, very original creative solutions that have been appearing. Uh, there's the issue of harassment and sexual violence. And in Brazil, that's particularly uh, problematic because uh, the uh, institutional handling of these issues is still very, very primitive, especially as compared to uh, other countries, for instance, the United States. <laughs> Okay, how do you become a mathematician in Brazil? For many people, this starts out by being a part of a, a, a math Olympiad. Not for me, but for many people, this starts out with the yeah, math Olympiad, which um, happens during the basic schooling, during uh, middle school years, uh, uh, sixth and seventh grade, uh, and uh, also at the uh, undergraduate level. So that's where people find their talents, that's where people get recruited, 
uh, get encouraged, um, and uh, it, it plays a really important role in uh, becoming a mathematician in Brazil. Uh, after that, uh, at the end of high school, you're supposed to choose a career in Brazil, and uh, the, uh, uh, there are two basic undergraduate programs in mathematics, the bacharelado, the bachelor's degree, and the licenciatura, which is designed to produce high school teachers, but many, many mathematicians uh, came out of the of a licenciatura program. Okay. Uh, then there are the uh, graduate programs, of course, uh, the master's and the, the uh, doctorate program, and one has to compete for fellowships, and these are becoming increasingly scarce. So again, you have to compete more and more uh, if you want to become a mathematician in Brazil. Okay. All right, the next step is uh, a postdoc, of course, but then uh, getting a position in a university. And usually it's a public university if you're going to go into an academic career. And that involves taking a concurso. So what's a concurso? A concurso involves an edital, a call for applications. Uh, you apply by sending a form, by sending a supporting material, your CV, a research statement, a teaching statement, a memorial, and then a, a date or dates are set for a concurso, and that involves convening a jury of uh, around five people, usually, um, to choose among uh, a number of different candidates. For instance, my husband is on a uh, jury, uh, as we speak, with uh, 12 candidates, okay? So this is like a whole week job because the concurso involves several different tests, uh, sometimes a written test, a um, research uh, 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 talk, where you're going to talk about your projects, your research projects, a teaching test where you're going to be assigned a topic and you have to teach that topic to the class on that topic in front of a jury. And there's lots of things, lots of tests where the candidate is up uh, in front of the whole jury, uh, alone in front of the whole jury, okay? Um, and that's a problem because most juries are all male. So this is another difficulty that we face in getting a position, we women face, which is we have to be comfortable to uh, be put under pressure in front of a jury, uh, an all-male jury. All right, uh, what are the career levels? Well, as usual, you have uh, roughly three different career levels, the assistant, associate, and full professor, but differently from the United States, for instance, uh, the, the associate professor is not tantamount to, is not synonym of being tenured. You're tenured usually when you get into a concurso. So you can be tenured even if you're not a PhD, although this is getting increasingly rare in Brazilian universities. Usually you're tenured uh, at, at your entry level, which is assistant professor. You're just a young PhD and you have a tenured position uh, at a university in Brazil. Okay. Um, and then you get promoted from assistant to associate, from associate to full professor. So the highest level inside the, the uh, academic career inside the university is the titular, the full professor. Well, but that's not the whole story because in Brazil we have something called a research productivity grant, which is an award uh, made um, for uh, productivity in research. Productivity in research is, uh, productivity is sort of uh, in between quotes because quality sometimes counts more than, or usually counts more than the number of uh, actual research papers that you produce. Okay. There are uh, five different levels. The entry level is the level two, okay? Uh, and then you progress from that to 1D, 1C, 1B, and 1A, okay? Uh, the, uh, what is it? Is this, uh, this is, uh, well, it comes in two parts. There is uh, a part which is a, a stipend for a salary complementation. It's really a sort of a pat on the back. You're doing really well. You're going to be a great researcher. Continue. Um, it's an encouragement. Uh, and you get sort of additional money for your pocket, which you can spend as you wish. Starting at levels, at, at level 1D and then 1D, 1C, 1B, and 1A, in addition to the salary complementation, you get research funding, which you of course have to account for later, 
Okay, but it is uh, a major and important uh, a, a encouragement um, for your research because you get money, you get funding, which you can basically spend as you wish uh, with uh, uh, conferences, visitors, equipment, uh, whatever you need. Okay. All right, and then uh, and and the highest level there is one A. So again, it's a, a ranked uh, a, a system of awards, if you will. Okay, the uh, um, the Holy Grail would be becoming a member of the Brazilian Academy of Sciences, and uh, I'm going to get into that uh, later in my slides. Uh, we're going to look at what are uh, what, what do what does the situation of women look like in the Brazilian Academy of Sciences, and that's one of the places where you see uh, most obviously the gender gap. Okay. Okay. Let's start looking at the Brazilian Olympiad. So this is a very old uh, <clears throat> endeavor. It started in the 70s, the Brazilian Math Olympiad, and the stated objectives of the Math Olympiad are, um, you know, to, to, to find excellence, to find and recruit uh, excellence and talent in the mathematics. Okay? It's one of the, the most important stated uh, objectives. <clears throat> it's uh, done at four different levels. Uh, level one is sixth and seventh graders. Mm -hmm. Eighth and ninth graders, level two, high school students, level three, and then there's the university level, which is basically for uh, early uh, undergraduates. Um, in 2013, um, I collected this. The source for this, or myself, I just you know went through the list and counted uh, how many awards there were and how many uh, females in these awards, and you clearly see. Uh, uh, in 2013, uh, the uh, gender gap issue arises. So nearly 20% of the awards amongst the 6th and 7th graders were women. And when you get to uh, high school, that number goes down by half, um, and then it goes down by half again at the university level. <clears throat> These are the awards, uh, gold medal, silver, uh, bronze, and honorable mention. Okay. All right. Uh, let's move forward five years and see what happened. Okay. Um, and among the school kids, the situation is even worse. You have 25% of girls in level one going down to 11%. Level two going down to less than 4% of awards at level three in high school. Okay. Um, situation is somewhat better at the uh, university level, maybe because the uh, issues around the gender gap are starting to percolate. I don't know why, but here you had a particularly good year with uh, uh, six women among 67 being, uh, receiving awards at the university level last year. Now, another Math Olympiad, completely different in, in its set of objectives, is called the OBMEP, the Brazilian Olympiad, Math Olympiad for school kids, for, for public school kids. Uh, and the, uh, uh, the numbers here are completely different. Here you have about 18 million students participating. Uh, the uh, Brazilian Math Olympiad is maybe 1,000 students. So it's a completely different scale. And the objectives are also very different because the OBMEP has as, as its objective to improve, to act and improve on the uh, Brazilian school system okay? by offering more challenges for students and for teachers alike. But you see also the, this, uh, this uh, slowing down of awards for, for girls, for women, um, as you uh, age. So level one and two, middle school kids, there were only 30% of the awardees that were girls, but this goes down to 20% uh, in high school. Okay, this prompted the creation of something very new and very exciting starting this year. Okay which is an all-women, all-girls math uh, uh, olympiad. It's called Torneio Meninas na Matemática, okay? And um, it's going to be a part of the uh, selection of the team of four women who will compete in the international, the only international math olympiad for girls, which is the European Girls Math Olympiad, okay? Which started, which is also a very new thing. It started in 2012, okay? And uh, each country chooses four women to compete 
in this math Olympiad. So this is uh, uh, this initiative actually is part of uh, several changes that have been going on uh, regarding the gender gap issue in mathematics in Brazil. Okay, uh, before I get into that, let's look at what's, what, what is the picture inside universities. So again, the source for these numbers is, is just counting. Okay. Um, it's, it's not very easy to find uh, these numbers because not all uh, institutions have the same structure, not all institutions uh, have the, uh, their, their, their faculty um, on, on their websites. Okay. But uh, here we have four big uh, uh, relevant departments of mathematics or math institutes in the country. There's INFO, the, the uh, foremost uh, math institution in Brazil. It's, a, it's not a university. IMPA is a math institute, a research institute, and a graduate program with a graduate program. Uh, they have a faculty of uh, 44. They're just mathematics. Okay. And among these 44 faculty members, one is a female. There's one woman. And this is not a fluke. This is not a coincidence. This is not a happenstance that of this year. Okay. This has been going on for about at least 30 years. For at least about 30 years, there's been only one woman on the faculty at IMPA, and it's not the same woman. Okay. Uh, so the foremost in mathematical institution in the country has one female faculty among 44. That's quite a statement. At the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, there are 30% of the, of the uh, faculty are women. And that's uh, uh, not representative of what the country looks like. Okay, um, there's a lot of women there, and actually, there's a lot of women in the top positions as well. So there's a lot of uh, uh, female professors, a lot compared to other places. Uh, female professors um, at, at the full professor level at UFRJ. Um, Unicamp has about 20%. Unicamp is the State University of Campinas, as 20% of their faculty are women. Okay? And Hulki, which is one of the only private uh, research uh, uh, universities, uh, where, uh, universities with you know, PhD granting program, et cetera, uh, in the country, has only one woman in 17 faculty members. It's a very small math department with only one woman. And that situation is very different. Uh, I was a student at Fulke undergraduate and master's, and when I was a student, I can remember at least five different women uh, in, in a faculty of, say, around 20. Okay, so that situation has gotten a lot worse okay, um, than it used to be. But when I was also a faculty member in uh, at UNICAMP at the University of Campinas for about 20 years, and um, when I, I remember when I first arrived, uh, there were a lot of women, a lot of women in the math department. It was roughly 50-50. Um, and I believe that this situation has, gone, has gotten worse over the years. The, uh, the number of women faculty members has got, gotten lower over the years because the uh, comp competition has become a lot fiercer, especially among the top uh, math departments in the country. Uh, nowadays, candidates come from all over the world, so there's a lot more candidates. And as a reflection of this, the number of women has gone down, especially considering that most of the juries are, are all male. Okay, uh, here is a picture of, a, a specific picture of the University of Campinas, what, what the University of Campinas looks like regarding men and women, and this is per uh, department. There are three departments in total, statistics, math, and applied math. Statistics has about 30% of their faculty being women. Mathematics is less than 10%, and applied math is even worse. Applied math is about 6% uh, of the, the faculty is women. Um, at the, uh, in terms of, of tiers, you have uh, um, it's not that bad. Uh, if you consider, th all, all things considered, you look at, you have about 6% of the uh, full professors are women. 
Okay, um, here's some more information uh, about the, uh, uh, this is from 2014, uh, of this, the gender gap in the various stages of the career in undergraduate, as undergraduates, graduate program, uh, research pr productivity awardees, and Brazilian Academy of Science members. Okay. So as you move up in the career, the uh, gender gap gets more pronounced, as is the case in basically every STEM field. Uh, this is a graph of, with an x-ray of two big math meetings that were held in 2015 in Brazil. One is called the Jovens Pesquisadores, the Young Researchers in Mathematics meeting, and the other one is the Brazilian Colloquium of Mathematics. It's a huge meeting of uh, about a thousand people uh, held every two years at IMPA. And what we have here is what does the uh, organizing committee look like? It's all male for this one and uh, not for the uh, uh, Brazilian colloquium. Okay. Session organizers, this is a percentage of women, this is how many women there were. Okay. And uh, speakers, this is how many women there were among speakers. Uh, let's look at organizing and uh, session organizers and plenarists in the Brazilian colloquium, all male, all male, okay, and very few speakers that are women. So this is another thing that we're very concerned with in mathematics, is to have more speakers, more uh, organizers, more members of scientific committees, more plenarists, uh, which are women. <coughs> okay, the situation is not that different in the United States. This is uh, information from the annual survey of mathematics that's done by the AMS, the American Mathematical Society. Okay, and we also see uh, a, a large uh, gender gap here. We have 20% of all PH, uh, PhDs in mathematics who are teaching at a PhD granting institution. 20% of these are women. Okay, the upshot is that females, uh, but it, as, as undergraduates, females, sorry, as graduates, Females account for 30% of the PhDs uh, in, uh, in mathematics, given in mathematics all over the United States. Okay, <clears throat> more data, but the relevant thing is that women are hold 14% of the full-time tenured and 26% of the full-time tenure track positions in PhD granting institutions. So very, very few women also in um, in the United States. <coughs> okay, uh, let's now let's look at the research productivity grants in mathematics. Uh, in 2014, I did this. Uh, I, I drew up this chart. We, you had a total of 297 research productivity grants awarded in mathematics. Of this total, 10% were women. At the entry level, almost 12% were women. At the uh, highest levels, 1A and 1B, 7.7% were women, or six. The number went down from 19 entry level to six at the highest level. And how has this changed in uh, five years? Five years time, you have a few more grants, 338, and a few less women, 8.6%, okay? A few more women at the highest positions, at the highest levels, 1A and 1B. So what's happening here? No women are entering the system. No women are entering, are, become, are getting awards in, as uh, uh, research and productivity grants. And if you look at the lists, that's exactly it. There are no new women. The new awardees are all male. In five years, the new awardees are all male. There's no new women. So the women who were present in 2014, these 19 women just started moving up the ranks. Some became, some got to 1B, some moved up to 1D, 1C, some got to 1B, and Nobody got to 1A. There were two women in 2014, and it's the same two women in 2019. Okay, this is pretty dramatic. Yeah. 
Okay, uh, the Brazilian Academy of Sciences has some good news. Okay, so uh, this, the first chart is from 20, 2002. You had a total of 63 members in the Brazilian Academy of Mathematics, of Sciences in the field of mathematics, in the field of mathematics. And of these 63, okay, there was one woman. Okay, one woman. All right. Um, I'm sorry, yeah, uh, and one associate, this associate does no longer exists, actually, okay? 12 years later, 12 years later, the number is now, the total is 110, and there are five women uh, in the Brazilian Academy of Sciences. Wow, that's a huge difference, okay? But the, the, uh, this, this is slightly misleading because actually a new category was created, this affiliate category. This affiliate category is for young researchers. It's an, uh, an encouragement for young researchers. They are elected to the Brazilian Academy of Sciences for a period of five years and then they're out. Okay, so this is a short-term, a temporary membership in the Brazilian Academy of Sciences. Okay, uh, among the permanent members, what you really have to do is to compare this number three with, let's say, this number one. Okay in 12 years. Five years later, we have five, five permanent members. This is huge. But of these five permanent members, the, the two new ones with respect to 2014, in which there were three, the two new ones uh, came in this year, in 2019. And 2019 was a really good year for uh, the gender issue at the Brazilian Academy of Sciences because there were six new women that were elected to the Brazilian Academy of Sciences. This was huge. Here we have the uh, uh, picture, one, two, three, four, five, that's me, six. Yeah, I got elected to the Brazilian Academy of Sciences this year, but I was very pleased to be one among six new women in the Brazilian Academy of Sciences, among engineers, uh, computer scientists, and mathematics, who were two women elected to the Brazilian Academy of Sciences this year. This was huge. Uh, this is sort of following uh, the, uh, uh, what's been going on, which is that all of a sudden, the gender gap issue is uh, uh, um, in the front lines and the, in the, uh, uh, it's the thing that people talk about uh, in, in uh, Brazilian mathematics, okay? Uh, this started with the Encontro Paulista de Mulheres da Matemática in 2016 uh, in, uh, uh, the at the University of Campinas which was a, a, an initiative from young female researchers, young female mathematicians who were started getting really concerned with the gender gap issue and they organized this uh, encounter, this meeting okay, of uh, people from, from just from the state of Sao Paulo, was very well attended. Uh, that led to uh, the uh, project Matemática Substantivo Feminino, Okay, which was funded by the, uh, partially funded by the IMU, the International Mathematical Union. It was a cycle of debates. It started with a round table, uh, which was part of the uh, Brazilian Colloquium of Mathematics, which was extremely well attended, uh, even though they were allotted only one hour, only one hour. And actually, it, I was there, it was really impressive. There was this uh, auditorium, which was filled to the brim with people sitting on the floor, was really, really impressive, okay? Lots of people wanted to say a lot of things. Uh, that then- hey, in, uh, Elena, do you, do you hear me? Um, yes. Do, we should start wrapping up. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I am, I'm, I'm almost done, I'm almost done, okay? Uh, we had the workshop for women in differential equations and then finally the world meeting for Women in Mathematics, which was part of the uh, uh, International Congress for Mathematicians, which is a huge meeting, 5,000 people, uh, which was held in Rio uh, last year. The series of roundtables, Mathematica Substitutiva Feminina, was held all, were a series of debates and roundtables held all over Brazil. You have IMPA, you have Rio Grande do Norte, Amazonia, Sao Paulo, uh, Rio Grande do Sul, Santa Catarina, everywhere, Rio de Janeiro, everywhere people held roundtables over last year. 
uh, it led to this uh, website, Matemática Substantiva Feminino, with uh, links, with uh, information, uh, opportunities for women in mathematics. Um, it was taken up institutionally. A committee was created, a gender committee was created by the Brazilian Math Societies and Applied Math Societies. It started showing up on their newsletter, Matemática Mulher, que coletivo existimos, coletivo mulheres do IME. Uh, we, the uh, Gender Gap Commission, Committee came up with a set of directives because we started seeing more and more, uh, paying attention to more and more conferences where, with all male speakers and all male scientific committee members. And finally, uh, this year we had the first Brazilian encounter for women in mathematics with over 350 participants. Very, very impressive. Two day meeting with the round tables, with the mathematical talks, uh, and this is a picture from the event. This was a, a, a really a highlight of the uh, part of the Brazilian colloquium of mathematics. Okay, um, institutional projects have been starting to appear all over the country. Okay, websites, um, <clears throat> and okay, so, all right, regarding maternity issues. Here's a few, a, a couple of things that have happened. The uh, Brazilian uh, funding agency started to grant uh, extra years for maternity. Uh, here is a, a, a solution that was proposed very recently in the uh, Sani Mata, which is a mathematical meeting for applied math, a, a, a big meeting. Uh, they held the Sani Makinu, which was uh, you, you were encouraged to bring your kid and the kid had activities just for kids proposed just for kids. Okay, um, let me wrap up. Conclusions. Brazil is waking up to the gender issue, gender and diversity issue in mathematics through a grassroots efforts, effort which started among young mathematical researchers, young female mathematical research. But we still have a very long path ahead. We still need affirmative, more affirmative action. We need mentorship. We need institutional solutions for harassment and violence. It's uh, it's a, at, a, at a very early stage, but it's a beginning. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. So we will have a few questions. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. I'm down. I'm back here. I don't know if you can see me. I have a question and a comment. At first is a comment. I don't know if you know the Matemaniaca. It's a girl in YouTube. Yeah, I was just, I just wanted to mention her because I think she does a, a great job to bring more yeah. girls to, mathema to math mathematics. And the second, it's kind of a question without answer, I think. It's about the field medal. Yes. It's you only have like one woman in the whole history of the medal that have won it. Is there some kind of, I don't know, some kind of uh, conscientization about it to, to bring up the question why there are not women winning the field medal, something like this? Okay, um, I don't know why, okay? Uh, I can tell you that this is a concern which is at the forefront of every mathematician's mind. And it was a major, a major, very, very important step and very, very widely celebrated when Miriam Mirzakhani, who unhappily uh, passed away early in her, her, her life, uh, when she won the Fields Medal in 2014, it was a really big thing. Um, but uh, we were hoping that last year we would get another, a second, at least a second woman, uh, and we didn't, and we didn't. But this is at least a, a concern which is at the forefront of everybody's mind, every research mathematician's mind, the fact that you need more women uh, getting Fields Medals. is very important because it's the role model issue. Tá, primeiro eu vou fazer um comentário para contextualizar a minha pergunta e aí eu vou perguntar. Então, você mencionou sobre a Olimpíada Matemática de Escolas Públicas e eu participei durante o meu ensino médio de muitas Olimpíadas, e, inclusive dessa. E, tipo, metade das vagas são destinadas para quem for bem na primeira fase e a outra metade é para quem 
Eu vou bem na regional. Só que a regional, pelo menos a Olimpíada de Matemática do Estado de Goiás, que é de onde eu venho, ela é um tanto quanto tendenciosa, porque, tipo, você não faz uma prova para passar, tipo, e fazer a outra, porque são duas provas. A primeira, tipo, as escolas que organizam, e a segunda é a que estão nos institutos federais ou na universidade. E essa primeira prova, ela fica a cargo da escola. Só que muitas das vezes a escola simplesmente não aplica essa prova. E aí fica a cargo do professor indicar quem são os alunos que ele acha que são bons em matemática. Só que aí que tá, a maior parte dos professores são homens e eles sempre indicam os alunos. E eu lembro que quando eu queria participar, o professor simplesmente esqueceu de me indicar. E eu tinha, tipo, até mais medalhas que os outros meninos. E aí eu falei, tipo, por que, que você não me indicou? E ele pediu mil desculpas e falou que já tinha mandado a lista. E aí ele teve que mandar um e-mail com o meu currículo pedindo mais uma vaga. Mas, tipo, se eu não tivesse falado com ele, se não tivesse outras medalhas ou qualquer outra justificativa, eu simplesmente não teria nem a chance de participar da Olimpíada de Matemática do Estado de Goiás porque eu não fui indicada. Então, eu acho que eu, a minha pergunta... É se tem alguma forma de consertar essa situação, de fazer uma prova unificada para que eles parem de se indicar homens e deem mais oportunidades para mulheres. Ok, um, é, I, I will answer in, in English, if that's ok with you, ok? Uh, so, first of all, um, the only way that I know of uh, fixing a situation like this is to bring it to the attention of uh, the people in charge, okay? And that is one of the things that the Gender Commission uh, for, the uh, Gender Gap Commission uh, for Mathematics is in charge of, is to bringing information such as this uh, to the attention of those who organize, for instance, the OBMF. Okay, so I am a member of the Comissão uh, Comité de Gênero de Matemática, and um, I, I will bring your, your story uh, to the attention, okay? And, and stories such as these. Of course, something like this cannot happen, okay? Uh, we need more and more uh, sen uh, sensibility, sensitivity, sorry, towards the gender gap issue. Uh, and all I can say is that it seems to be headed in a good direction, and let's keep up the good work. Any other questions? Another one. Uh, thank you very much for the talk. And I was wondering about the opportunities for mathematicians out of the academia in Brazil. Do you have some um, opportunities or some very few? Other, very few. Very few. This is uh, uh, outside of academia, and of course outside of teaching high school. Uh, there are very few opportunities um, in the industry. Uh, some there are some opportunities in uh, the in banks. There are some mathematicians who work in banks, um, in the government, in the BGE, uh, but uh, there are very few. Um, this is something that that is of a concern to the uh, Brazilian scientific community. Actually, uh, in general, is that uh, industries don't hire researchers typically in Brazil. Any other questions? Okay, so we thank Elena. This went pretty good. I mean, fine. Thank you. Bye bye. So we are at the coffee break time. So I say we go to the coffee break, try to come back 5 to 11, and then we move on with the talks.